Welcome to or welcome back on the Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host. And in the picture, you see the new Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch in an 18 karat Sedna gold case and with an 18 karat Sedna gold bracelet. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to get our latest notifications. In a separate hands-on video, I present you the new Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch in the steel case, either with the Hazelit or the Sapphire Crystal. So if you have not seen the video yet, I do recommend you to watch it because there I go really into details about the watch, about the movement, about the dial, etc., etc. But now this video is really done for the Sedna Gold version and dedicated to the Sedna Gold version. So enjoy what I will tell you about the Sedna Gold, the new Speedmaster in Sedna Gold. And it is the very first time that I'm doing a hands-on video on a full gold watch. I'm pretty excited. I normally don't do these uh, because uh, yeah, it's not so often that I get hands on them. And of course, we do more concentrate on steel watches, uh, especially when it is about uh, sports chronographs or sports watches. But there it is, Setna Gold, 18 karat. That's a beautiful Speedmaster, incredibly. I'm falling in love with it. The more I see, the more I touch it. And uh, yeah, let me show you the first pictures. Um, of the watch. Please enjoy them with some music. This is how the watch looks like. Speedmaster. Which generation does the new Speedmaster belong to? There you go, you have the insert on your screen now. And yes, this new Speedmaster is based on the ST105012. That's the fourth generation of the Speedmaster. It's on the right side in your picture. And before, you know, the Speedmaster was introduced in 1957 as the CK2915, then followed in 1959 by the CK2998 followed uh, in 1962 by the 105002 and 105003. And then in your right picture, you have the ST105012. And this is the base for the new Speedmaster, either in steel or in 18 karat Sedna Gold. And there is also a version in, in the so-called Canopus Gold, that's a white gold, a special white gold alloy Omega is using, but we are not able to show you the watch because we don't have it. So let me come back. Let me just pick it and then describe you the watch in all details. To get as close as possible, to the original design of that Speedmaster, Omega made a computer tomography of the case of the fourth generation of an original ST105012, and the result is in your picture. 42 millimeter is the diameter. The so-called lug from this end to the other end of the lug is 47 millimeters and the thickness of the case as you see it now is 13.18 millimeter 13.18 wow that's really a gorgeous look i'm looking on my small screen here on my camera that looks Simply fantastic. Everything you see in the picture, the crown, the push pieces are, of course, made out of 18 karat Sedna gold, a special gold, rose gold alloy Omega is using to manufacture these watches. And then let me also show you, of course, the basil. The basil is an 18 karat gold basil, yes, Sedna gold, and the inlay, loyal to the design of the Speedmaster, stays in aluminium, so this is an aluminium inlay, featuring a tachymatic scale, and also featuring the legendary dot over 90, this is the dot over 90, so that little dot that is not symmetrical, 
Here it is, perfectly zoomed in, and you can see the tachymetric scale features the legendary dot over 90. The majority of the surface of this Speedmaster is brushed, but there are also some polished surfaces, as you can see here on the lug. Of course, the bush pieces, the crown is polished. And yes, the basil is also being polished, but the majority of the surf surface, especially the entire bracelet, is matte. There is no polished part on it. The logo, the Omega logo is polished. It has a little hint or a little detail on the clasp, on the folding clasp, but as you can see, the entire surface is matte and this is good. So the reflections coming from this beautiful gold alloy are not too intense when you are wearing it and it is still decent when you have it on your wrist. This is a sun brushed black step dial with applied indexes in Edingrad gold and an applied Omega logo also in 18 karat gold. And this logo is a very particular logo Omega is using here. There you can see it when I'm using the reflections of my light. Um, this is a very particular logo because it is the very first time that Omega is using the corporate logo, the uh, actual corporate logo on the dial before the logos, the Omega logos on the dial always had a certain boldness or a certain style, but now they are really um, coming back to uh, their corporate logo and it is being applied on the dial. The logo is also being diamond polished, so really looking good. And I was told the exercise to develop this logo was pretty tough to make it as beautiful as it is. The hands, you can see, the hands on the dial are domed. The central second hand is domed and also the minute hand is domed. So these two hands are following the shape, the stepped shape of the dial. The watch has three counters, a running second at nine o'clock, a 30 minute count for the chronograph at three o'clock and a 12 hour counter at six o'clock. What about the dark or loom shot? Does the watch feature Super Luminova? Yes, I said it before and please watch. There we go. This is how the Setna Gold Speedmaster looks like when it's dark and before has been charged with a light source. You see dots indicating the five minute indexes, you have the, the hour and minute hand, and of course the central second hand that feature white sumilo, super luminova with green emission. So perfectly um, ready also to be used in the dark, just with a little difference that if you compare and if you watch the other video, you will see it where I show the steel versions. There is Super Luminova being applied on the entire index and not only the index is highlighted with a little dot as we see here. The entire bracelet in your picture has been developed from scratch. This is a design that has never been used before. It did not exist before Omega put together some of the favorite designs of the Omega Speedmaster bracelets and designed the new one. And you can see it features a folding clasp um, with a clasp with two push pieces to open and close it. And you have I counted them a total of 12 links on both sides. That's, that's pretty much, for me at least, for my wrist, it is too much. 
and in the entire watch as you see it here in the picture within a, a summary of 24 links 12 on both sides weighs 219 grams so that's quite something it's uh, yeah 290 grams of gold the clasp with its matte surface i've been showing you this before uh, has as just said two push pieces so click once you close it you need i bring it into the camera so we can see there are the two push pieces and you have to apply on both otherwise it will not open and once opened we do discover um, the inner side where that pin is being held by this mechanism but and this is now in uh, my humble opinion the only flaw of the entire Omega Speedmaster the new Omega Speedmaster watch collection the new ones they all do feature the same type of bracelet they all even uh, either in, in red gold in Sedna gold or still have the same clasp folding clasp you will see this if you have not been watching the video where I present the sea watches please do so they do have exactly the same clasp but there is no length adjustment so if you want to do or if you need to do a length adjustment you need tooling it is not possible to do this with the clasp in the clasp you can see two drilled holes and there is a spring bar and uh, with some tooling this is the tooling you need kind of a pointer and then you will push and you can push on the spring bar on one side and then on in a diagonal way move it forward to the second hole then you turn the watch around and you do the same here you push on the spring bar and you just slide it in the clasp to this hole then you have a certain adjustment that you can operate this is this part i'm showing right now here this is maybe two three millimeters are possible but there is no way of doing this without tooling and uh, this i have to say yep they should have offered um, if they develop the entire bracelet it has not existed before they, and they developed the clasp and they could have added that little feature to be able to adjust the length without tooling and um, if Omega you're watching the video now and if someone from the product management is watching the video or is being told that Alexander said that please please think about maybe later as an add-on or maybe you give uh, the buyers of the new Speedmaster the possibility to get a clasp that enables you to adjust the length a little bit without the need of this particular tooling here. You should not need this to adjust the length or do a little readjustment of the length. To do basic length adjustments, you use uh, the bracelet, the links that are in the bracelet, you see they are screwed in. You need a screwdriver and then uh, you can take them out. It's probably better to do this with a watchmaker if you don't have the appropriate tooling because once you slide from the screw, you scratch the surface. It's a polished surface from the side, as you can see, and uh, already touching it with fingers as I clearly see here, because I did not swipe over this side of the watch before filming it, you can clearly see, yes, you, it's a polished surface and you risk, of course, to damage or to scratch the surface. So this should be done better with a watchmaker or someone who is really able to do this. I do want to show you the new 3861 caliber, the chronograph caliber from the backside. So I will dismantle um, the bracelet so that we have the perfect visibility on it. And as you see, that's really easy. Have you seen it? This is no rocket science. You just push down with the tooling and then you have here, this is the spring bar this is the little spring bar that holds the thing together and once you have done this it is open so it's no rocket science if you are used to do such operations you can do it 
Please enjoy some more pictures uh, of the new Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch in uh, Setna Gold. Now it's time to discover the free 861, uh, the successor of the 861, 1861. As you know, all you Speedmaster fans, you know that this is a movement that has been evolved, has been technically uh, brought up to date now. And uh, watch some of the pictures uh, from the movement I've been filming. And let me just tell you a little bit about it. It's the latest generation co-actual master chronometer certified Movement of Omega, the watch is officially certified by METAS, the Swiss Institute of Metrology, and the entire movement since uh, Omega did um, replace all parts that can be influenced by magnetic fields. They replaced all the parts that are critical to it with parts that are non-critical and now the magnetic resistance of the entire watch. METAS is testing the entire watch, but also, of course, the movement is 15,000 Gauss. 15,000 Gauss. Something that's really what you need these days if you really want to be sure that your watch, when you're using it on a daily basis and you are surrounded on a daily basis by lots of magnets, on your iPad cover, on your iPhone, on some invisible magnets that are keeping together a handbag. They are everywhere. You are surrounded by them and they're getting more and more because more and more this technology is used these days to um, do different things and a watch if it is not like Omega does it, completely protected against the magnetic field, will, when be magnetized, start to show the wrong time because either the watch runs too quick or too slow. So it's a manual winding chronograph. Of course, we don't see any um, rotor. It is features 26 joules. The frequency of the balance wheel is 21,600 semi-oscillations free hertz. So the central second hand swipes with one sixth of a second on the dial. Power reserve now is 50 hours, improved to 50 hours. So the coaxial escapement. Uh, let me quickly uh, come back and here I am with the pointer. This is the balance wheel and you can clearly see if you remember the architecture of the 861, 1861. Omega did not change the architecture of that movement. They just replaced the parts and rebuilt them, as I just said, out of materials that really cannot be magnetized from a strong magnetic field. So we still have that particular big balance wheel that the movement always featured, but now it is a coaxial escapement on three levels with a Neva shock, shock absorber. The movement has Geneva waves and a circular graining rhodium plated, uh, is rhodium plated, gold uh, plated engravings and a chronograph mechanism with satin finished surfaces and polished beveled edges. So it's a luxury finish and a beautiful movement. And to make it clear, it is not, there are no two different versions existing. So if you are buying the Omega Speedmaster, even if you are buying the one with the Hazelid glass that does not feature a see-through case, you will get the same movement as you just see on your screen. It is one type Omega is using for the steel version with the sapphire crystal on both sides and as well for the Hazelit version with the Hazelit class and the solid case back. The 3861 chronograph caliber is a not a flyback on not a column wheel chronograph. The system is operated by a cam. That's what you see here. And if you're interested to learn more how that cam is operated and how it works, please 
watch the video I uh, we have online about the steel edition the steel version of the Speedmaster and in this video I do explain lots of details of the chronograph how the chronograph is operate it when you start stop it reset it etc there's one thing i want to show you here this is a part particularity of the new movement the 3861 for the very first time for the speedmaster movement for the successor of the 861 and 1861 features a so-called stop second so when you pull out the crown the oh yep i'm sliding there you go sliding with my gloves and then you see the balance wheel stops of course when the balance wheel stops on the dial side also the the central second hand the entire watch is stopped and i will restart it but the function is especially used to set the exact time when you're using a time reference so once the uh, hand of the running second has reached 60 or zero you pull out the crown and then you're waiting for a time signal to perfectly set the time this is what i will do now if i'm not once again sliding when doing this pulling out the crown and there you go you see so the second hand stops and this is a feature the new movement the new 3861 offers and the versions before the 861 and 1861 did not feature this stop second The story about Omega, finally, after all these years, correcting the graduation of the chronograph dial, is something I really want you to discover by watching the video about the steel version. I, in all details, explain why now, all of a sudden, we see two dots in between the second dots the graduation now is adopted to the frequency of the movement. It's a free hertz movement and the dial no longer shows a graduation for the one fifth of a second or the free caliber 321 that Omega used to the beginning and they never changed this false graduation on the dial. So the watches had all together until the last generation had a graduation that was usable for a movement where the balance wheel oscillates with 18,000 semi-oscillations, 2.5 Hz, and the central second hand swipes over the dial in the speed or is dividing the time in one fifth of a second. And you could read, of course, with the wrong, with the correct graduation the one-fifth of a second but then Omega as you all know with the 861 and the 1861 caliber changed the frequency so we have a free hertz movement and the second hand is swiping with one-sixth of a second on the dial and now they finally did that correction and if you look closely you will so far always find four dots in between the, the second here the second dots you will find four now there are two and why this is the case i do explain this in the video of the steel watcher please go and watch it and you will understand what i wanted to tell you this new speedmaster is available in different uh, variations so depending on how you want to wear the watch you can either buy it with the full gold bracelet and the gold case it's always a gold case but the gold bracelet and if you are um, interested in buying it in uh, this configuration the watch actually is sold here in austria including 20 percent vat for 34,300 euros and if you are interested in wearing the watch with a black leather strap, we only have a picture. There it is, with a black leather strap, with an 18 karat Setna gold deployment buckle. You pay 10,000 euro less. 
and the watch is sold for 24,300 euro including 20% VAT here in Austria. So these are the possibilities how you may wear the new Speedmaster. I will quickly once run over this beautiful, really beautiful, brushed and executed. And uh, due to uh, the way how it is done, very softly, perfectly adopting to your wrist. Look at my wrist shot now, how the watch sits on my wrist. As I said before, I really fell in love with the watch. The more I was handling it, touching it, having it on my wrist, I did not expect myself to really reflect so positively on a full gold watch. This is still something that is, yeah, I would say that's a statement if you have it on your wrist. Absolutely. But yes, it is 100% an Omega Speedmaster. It is not a watch that um, yeah, you, you used to show off. It's, it's a statement, you like the Speedmaster, you are keen about the history of the Speedmaster, you know that this is the watch the astronauts wore when they were flying in, to the moon and when they were walking on the moon. You know that there is lots of history behind and you can fill entire evenings with the history of the Speedmaster and the newest edition based on the fourth generation, the ST105012 is in your picture. And if you wear it in gold, it is still decent. I wouldn't say this is yeah, loud or an expression of snobism or something. It is a statement. You decide, you, your taste is gold, you want it, wear it. And I think it is, in my humble opinion, maybe the best sports chronograph I've seen for a very long time and the best of the best is that Omega stayed loyal to its design, to the design of the Speedmaster. No ceramic inlay. Yes, I, I hear you shouting. Literally, I can hear you shouting. They must, should have done a ceramic inlay. No, they should, must have not done it. You know why? Because the Speedmaster never had a ceramic inlay and the original Moonwatch, the Moonwatch, other models do feature a ceramic inlay. Yes, that's okay. But the original Moonwatch, the one you see in this video, does not have to feature a ceramic inlay. Aluminium, as it was. And I think this is the, let's say, let's say the ultra cool understatement. So, something like Mr. Cool on your wrist. A full gold watch and an aluminium inlay. How cool is this? For me, it's perfect. So this watch is really ready to go with you wherever you want to go. 42 millimeters, thickness 13.18, waterproof 5 bars, 50 meters. The typical Speedmaster, nothing has changed. As I said, the ST105012, the fourth generation Omega did it by doing a computer tomography of the case and rebuilding it. So, thank you very much for watching my first review of a full gold sports watch. I've done this the first time. And, yes, I said it before, I'm falling in love with the watch. <laughs> um, the watch will leave me very soon, go back to Omega. Um, it's clearly marked when you, when you saw it on the pictures, not for sale. This is part of a collection that is touring around, being shown to the media, being shown to retailers, to interested people, VIPs, etc., etc. And I had the opportunity to have them here in my little studio and to film them for you. The steel versions with the Hesselet, the steel version with the sapphire crystal on top and on the backside, and of course with the Setna gold version you saw just now. 
Thanks for watching. Leave your comments. Tell me what you think about it. Can one wear such a watch? Is it okay to wear a full gold watch? What do you think? Do you agree with me that this is probably the coolest of those sports watches? Let us discuss in the comment section. I'm happy to read your comments. I'm keen to read your comments and very happy, of course, to answer all your questions that might come up. Bye-bye for now. And I'm looking forward to seeing you back here on Watch Advisor very soon. Bye-bye. Stay safe and sound.